and welcome to Catechrist Magazine. We can be found on the web at www.catechrist.com. My name is Jason J. Rock Houston, and it's my pleasure to be speaking to uh, Rev Jones. Um, how are you doing today, Rev? I'm good. How are you, man? It's great to talk to you. And, you know, um, we're going to be talking all about your new album. Um, th that album um, is not officially released till December. Is that correct? Or did it, is it already? Oh, no, it's out. It's it is out now. Yeah. Oh, great. Okay, so... Yeah. I, I gotta tell you, in prepping for an interview, I, I listened to the um, entire album, and, and I love it. And the thing, the thing I want people to understand, Rep, I don't know, really know how you'd, um, you define your music, because it's a little bit of everything. It's a little bit boogie, it's a little bit funk, it's a little bit um, metal and rock, it, it, and, and you're just the whole package. You can, you're a great singer, a great guitar player, so um, how would you describe your sound? Uh, music. <laughs> which, which is cool, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's, I, I always think of, like... Uh, like Queen, Queen, Night at the Opera, or Judas Priest, uh, Sad Wings of Destiny. You know, those two albums always come to mind. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's the two extremes, but yeah, you're, you're right yeah. there in the middle, you know. Um, yeah, and they both, you know, both those albums have the, the same thing. They have a song that's super heavy, and then, you know, a ballad type thing, you know. I mean, like the Judas Priest, you know, you got Victim of Changes, which has got everything in it, Yeah. you know. And then you have, the, you know, a heavy song like the Ripper, and then, you know, you have a, a, a piano song, you know, uh, oh, yeah. Epitaph, you know, it's like everything, you know, it's not just one direction, and I always kind of think of music like that, I hate whenever something is all, you know. One thing, yeah, I mean, um, yeah. I mean, even you go back to Queen, like you're saying, they, they have all kinds of music, I mean, even if you look at something like... Killer Queen, that that's got elements of uh, vaudeville, and then um, you know uh, Queen's really not thought of a metal band, but you go as far back as like Stone Cold Crazy. I mean, yeah. that's the closest uh, to metal they ever came, you know. <laughs> oh yeah, well I mean to me still the, the Prophet song off of uh, Night at the Opera, that's one of the heaviest songs of you know ever yeah. of yeah. anything. You know, I mean just that dun dun dun, you know, it's so heavy, and then it goes into that weird delay. Oh, people can you know. Yeah. All that stuff, and it's you know, it's just so. Uh, it wouldn't be metal, but it kind of is, you know. I mean, it's in a sense that if you you know just heavied up it just a little bit on the sound, yeah. it would be there, you know. Yeah, and, and, I mean, one thing that's really clear listening to the album. I mean, um, it's even if somebody's just discovering you um, for the first time, it's the first thing they've ever heard from you. I mean, um, you're really hard to pigeonhole, and I, I think that's cool because I could see you like. You know, having a, a hit with one of these songs, let's say on country radio, and then um, yeah. having something on, um, you know, a hit on metal radio or even rock, um, album oriented rock. It's it, it, it's really cool. Yeah. Um, you cross all over the place. Um, the first song is 1985, Back in Black. Talk a little bit about that. Uh, uh, it's I had that. It, it was actually a song I I kind of wrote for uh, the, my last album, and I didn't. I never could quite finish the. Uh, I mean, I kind of had most of the lyrics written, you know, the song was finished musically and I just, you know, I did, I was trying to find a good tie in, you know, yeah, yeah. with, with, you know, cause I had like the first verse was there, you know, and it was just yeah. about going to, you know, being a kid, going to concerts and, you know, hanging out outside of the arenas that, you know, and then you get inside and get the cigarette lighters yeah. and, you know, uh, I mean, you know, not, so I wanted to write a song about that. But then I, I got one verse out of it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah, that reminds me of hanging out like at the Sunset Strip, you know, back in the day, and, yeah. and it, you know, not even being in the club, but you could hear all the bands, you know, playing inside and you know, like wanting to get in there, you know. Oh yeah, I mean, it's the same with you know, like I, I always still remember uh, in between, you know, the the bands in between the opener and the headliner, yeah. just every guitar tech would come out to test the guitar, and there'd be like one of five different, you know. Yeah, it, and they would play, you know, Back in Black or, yeah, yeah. you know, Smoke on the Water or whatever it may be. One of those, but, yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah, that's when you knew it was almost time. <laughs> yeah, and you know, um, Back in Black, um, it's hard to believe that album's like 40 years old, you know. Um, yeah. And, um, I mean, Back in Black for ACDC, that was an interesting time because, I mean, you would be very surprised initially to think, okay, Bon Scott's just died, you know, they're going to be able to carry on, yeah. but, you know, where they ended with Bon Scott, you know, um, Highway to Hell, and then um, yeah, Back in Black, they, they, they were able to do it. Um, yeah, and there's, you know, that's, I mean, that's the thing. It's it's one of those, it, it, I mean, I called it Black and, Back in Black, even though it still wasn't, you know, uh, it wasn't 85, obviously. But, yeah, yeah. 
I called it the 85 just because that was the your time that was when, yeah. I was, yeah, I mean, was when I was 15 and yeah. you know the second verse is just about you know being in the car with your buddies you know cruising around listening to Priest and yeah. you know you know drinking and smoking or whatever you know whatever you did <laughs> you yeah, yeah and and even watching the video for uh, Lollygag and um what, what I love about the song is you just kind of do your thing and um, yeah. like I love the sense of humor like that's in the video um, yeah and, and I, I was reading the press release your publisher sent me. It says something about, um, tell the story about the fact that it was um, influenced by the movie, uh, or inspired by the movie yeah. Blazing Saddles. That's, yeah, that's the whole thing. There's those certain words that, you know, like, that's where I heard lollygagging. Yeah, yeah. He comes out, he's yelling at everybody, what are you lollygagging around like it's 120 degrees, yeah. you know? So I had to, I always wanted to write that into a, you know, into a song. So that was the only lyric I had was that. So I had to, write the whole song around you know, that or or the word buffoonery you know is is in another song i was you know it's those those funny little you know one-liners that you got to get in there you know yeah i mean it's and, the, the song the video is total comedy i mean people really got to see that and they'll, they'll really see yeah. your, your sense of humor come out in that i mean talk about the filming of the video i mean just watching it looked like a pretty yeah. fun thing to make you know well it's, it's funny because uh Sean Berman, uh, he's, he does all my videos with me, and uh, we have yet to actually set and storyboard out a video. <laughs> you know, we yeah, both yeah. of us run, both of us are out on tour with George Thorogood, and so we film them all while we're on the road. You know, so it's yeah, like yeah. all the downtime. Okay, we're we yeah. got about an hour today. Let's what can we film? You know, and so I mean that song was easier because you know there's. Uh, kind of a, a storyline in the sense that mm. you know you're just being lazy <laughs> you know yeah and i kind of act out you know the you know the funny lyrics that are being delivered but you know it's it was one of those things that when we we shot all of it and then went home and he we thought mm. now we're still gonna have to shoot some more and he went through all the footage and yeah you know a couple of days later sent me the first rough draft and he was like we don't have to shoot anymore we have it <laughs> and what i love about being inspired by that movie is i mean um movies these days sadly just like music um so, yeah. so oh, some of these classic things like blazing saddle pe people are telling us it's yeah. no good it's racist shouldn't watch it yeah. I, I think that's very um sad because what people are missing out on you know part of it, part of the reason some of these films were made that's how the world was back then you know and um yeah. i think you can learn from things and um, yeah. it's just a shame they want to, you know, stop people from seeing some of these classic movies. Yeah, I know, and it's, you know, it's, it's what's funny, because I watched a documentary of, on the making of Animal House, and, uh, the scene where they go in the, uh, in the bar with their dates. Yeah, yeah. And they're the only ones, uh, evidently the movie company wanted them to cut that out, because they thought everybody would find it too racist. So, yeah. the only way they could keep it in was they had Richard Pryor. Yeah. Go watch the movie, and his review uh, was "You white people's crazy." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. In those in those exact words. Wow. Which wow. that was that's why they thought it was racist because of uh, the dialect that they were talking, not because of the situation, but the, because they, you know. Yeah, yeah. And because he said it that way, they okay, they went ahead and let him keep it in the movie, you know. But it's, I mean. You could, if, I, I mean, in my yeah. opinion, in my opinion, yeah. it's a, if you're saying it to somebody, yeah. then it's racist. If you're, if you know, yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I, yeah. And, and Richard Pryor was one of the writers on the movie. Yeah, <laughs> on I mean, and Saddles. You know, I mean, see, see, that's the thing people are missing out. I mean, I mean, first of all, you know, if you're making a film from back in that time that features, you know, certain ethnic people, you know, they're gonna talk a certain way, we're going to address a certain way. I mean, you got to take all, all that into consideration, and it is it is what it is. But, you know, another thing um, I, I learned recently that's kind of interesting is, um, you know, the, the film the film industry, um, very early on, they started censoring themselves. I mean, somebody was telling me back in the day, like around the 1930s, when films were just starting to really be made for the first time, that, um, like, saying the word damn, it was, it was like blasphemy. You couldn't say that in, in, um, yeah. in a movie. You couldn't show, like... Um, like have a naked scene in a movie, and it's just amazing um, how how far they've um, strayed from that, you know. Yeah, well, I mean, it's well, what cracks me up <laughs> still is that they're taking these old movies and saying that it's uh, that it's got to be censored or whatever, but but they let stuff on the radio, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. and songs that are that are way obviously offensive, you know, that you know they might kind of beep it out or 
Yeah. But it's still, you know, it's still there. When I was a kid, you could put, you know, you had to figure out the cool way to say, you know, if you were talking about yeah. sex, it had to be, you know, incognito, you know. Yeah. Like Aerosmith, Aerosmith songs were great about it, you know, because yeah, yeah. you had... You know, you had those, you knew what they were talking about, you know, or the Rolling Stones, you know, uh, on the song Start Me Up. Oh, yeah. You, lyric, yeah. The lyric, you, you make a dead man come. Yeah. Well, in, in fact, you know, um, I, I was cracking up because recently um, the Rolling Stones put out this big press release that they're, they, they've, made a, they've made a business decision. They're never going to play their classic song, um, uh, Jumpin' Jack Fla uh, Flash, because it's, it's a racist song, or Brown Sugar, rather. Yeah. 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 I'm like... How, how, a great guy is to censor yourself after 50 years, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I mean, I look at it like, you know, it's, yeah. it kind of took away some of that coolness that, you know, whenever you, now you can say whatever you want. Yeah, yeah. You know, it, you know, it does take away from it. Uh, but, you know, it's, but, you know, going back to the, you know, the fun, being funny and my lyrics is, yeah. it, that goes back to Jim Croce. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, he's my, one of my heroes of all times of songwriters, but every song, even the serious love songs, it didn't matter. There was still one little funny yeah. line, like almost like the punchline, you know. It's like yeah. even even something like Leroy Brown, baddest man in the whole town. Yeah, he yeah. gets beat. He gets beat up in the song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you really listen to the lyrics, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You it, know, it's funny. They call him. You know, uh, he stands. You know, six foot five, whatever. All the downtown ladies call him Treetop Lover, and they just call him <laughs> Sir. Yeah, yeah. That's, those are. <laughs> It's, you know, that's worth listening to the song right there, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah, So, I try to do that in every song, you know. It's, if there's not some kind of humor in it, you know, sometimes it's hard for me because even if it's a serious, serious song, there's still got to be some kind of, you know, funny uh, personal thing or, yeah, yeah. you know. So, I, I, was, I was curious, like, um, when you write, typically... Um, do you start off with a riff, or do you start off with lyrics, or do you start off with, um, sometimes like um, with a song title and work your way around the song title? Uh, usually, the majority of the time, it's going to be the, uh, I, like if I write a riff, almost, I'd say 97% of the time, the riff that comes next and the riff that comes next all come right up with yeah, yeah. it, you know, and a lot of, I mean, a lot of times I'll come up with it, and I just kind of you know, like record myself playing the riff on a guitar or whatever, and then send it to myself, and it goes into a file. You know, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, a little, into a folder, and whenever I start, you know, trying right. to piece something together, yeah. you know, I find, oh, I want to use this, I want to use that, you know, and uh, and so I have that, and then I'll have some song titles or you know ideas. Yeah. Most of the time, when I write to get you know the music, I kind of have a melody, uh, you know, a melody or an idea of how I want to sing it. Yeah. And, you know, so usually I'm having to write lyrics to match the yeah. music, you know. Which, don't, yeah. Don't you just love um, modern technology? I mean, um, back in the day, you had to wait to, you know, you had the money to go to the studio and all that, and um, you, yeah. can just, you can just keep these riffs on your phone. That's got to be a cool thing for yeah. you. Well, yeah, I mean, I used to, it's funny because, I, I mean, there's, even on this, on my new album, there's some stuff written that I wrote 20 years ago that just never used or like you know I tried to use it a couple of times you know a couple yeah. of the songs I tried to use didn't like the you know or well, see, it, yeah. it, it didn't fit with the band I was playing yeah. with you know at the time like Steelheart or you know Michael Schenker or Black Symphony it yeah. didn't fit so they, I just kept them on the back burner you know yeah I love I love stuff like that you know because if you're really um, a, a, any kind of a, a decent songwriter I mean if you wrote a song 20 years ago you know, yeah. uh, it's still going to be a good song twenty years later. I mean, um, yeah. Kiss is one of those bands. I mean, they've been around for fifty years. They re they have countless unreleased songs. You know that they go back uh -huh. to. So um, it, it's great that you have like a backlog. You know, of uh, material to, to kind of um, work with. And the other, the next song on here is um, "Bad Gab COVID 19 And I got to tell you, um, I love this for obvious reasons. Because I mean. Um, this is dealing with what everybody's been going on in the last two and a half yeah. years, and um, talk a little bit about that. Yeah, so the bad gap part of the title is, that's the chords I'm playing. Okay. So, wow. B-A-D, G-A-B. Oh, wow. yeah, yeah. So, I, that was just like the working title, whatever. And cool, wow. I so, love and I started writing, uh, I started writing dummy lyrics for it, yeah. and uh, it was just kind of, that first verse came out, and I was kind of like, all right, well, that seems kind of, 
you know, like the quarantine related in a, in a sense, you know, yeah, yeah. and really, and really the song isn't, uh, you know, it just, if you read it in the context of, you know, our time period, yeah. it, it fell into that. So the only thing I had to change was the second verse. I, you know, added in the 2020, the year of yeah. the plague, you know, and COVID-19, uh, how did that affect you mean lockdown? I mean, I, I, I'm assuming you just spent time um, making this album. Yeah, I did. I mean, I sat around for, uh, I was actually out on tour right up to the quarantine. We came home, and the very next day is when they had the lockdown. Wow, wow. <laughs> and so uh, the first couple of months, uh, you know, we're kind of like, all right, I'm back home. You know, then I'd already planned on, you know, recording the album or writing it and everything. Yeah. And, but I... Uh, I just kind of well, finally well, hit a, yeah, I yeah. hit a point where I was like, okay, I've been on the couch too long. Let's uh, let's do something know. else. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I had a couple other things, you know, like going on. Up, you know, I did some other projects and uh, like the as, like the Leslie West that I was telling you about. While yeah, ago, tell us know. about that. Tell us a little bit about that project. Yeah. yeah. So we had we were, in January we were supposed to start recording Leslie's. It was going to be Leslie's last album, and it was. It was just going to be songs from throughout his career, that, oh, you know. Yeah, yeah. We were going to do them, do them how we do them now, you know, modern. And so, uh, and I'd literally, uh, we just talked a couple of days before he passed away. We oh, just talked wow. about it, and because uh, he was going to play a solo on one of my songs. Oh wow! And while we were in the studio, and uh, you know, so we were going to start recording like two weeks after he passes when we were supposed yeah. to start. So uh, they. They, you know, they had all got together, well, and come up with the idea, well, they've already had planned on doing it, you know, as a Leslie album, the same songs, you know, let's see if we can get the same artist, you know, because it was going to have guests on it. Wow. So, you know, let's see if they, we can get them to come in and we'll just, you know, make it a tribute. And uh, some of them, some of them pulled out, you know, uh, they just didn't want to if it wasn't, you know. So are these, are these like... Um Songs that he recorded throughout his career, but you guys are covering. Yeah. These, oh, cool. no, no, they were all no. It was like there's new songs. Uh, I think, no, it's like seven mountain songs. It's all the, it's all the songs that you you would know all of. Them, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. But it's, uh, just the way that we were going to do them with Leslie was a little different because yeah. we were going to do them how we do them live. I mean, know? just yeah, just think. Uh, I mean, how cool would that be? I mean, you know, you know, you guys yeah. that influenced uh, by Leslie West, and you get to get to play on his <laughs> yeah. album with him, but unfortunately, it didn't yeah. work out that way. But yeah. And, you know, I mean, it was so. I mean, it's uh, you know, and I had the privilege of playing on his last two records anyway. You yeah. know, uh, and you know, because I played with him since '07, I think is when I joined Mountain. Oh wow! You know, I played with I played with him all the way to the end. And did you and, play uh, in Mountain when Richie Scarlett was in the band? Yeah, he right after he left. Oh, okay. That's whenever oh. I came in and uh, started playing bass, and you know, I was there all the way through. You know, it was Mountain, and then it was just me and Leslie doing a a duo, no drummer. Yeah. And then we got Bobby Rondinelli and oh wow, he's we, a know, super drummer. And, wow. Yeah, Bobby plays on the uh, on the tribute album. That we I mean, just I did, mean so. that that really makes this really a, a true tribute album. But you know, because yeah. you you would think you know typically because Leslie died that maybe they'd say okay, well we're gonna we're not gonna um, go ahead with this. But that that makes it that much more of a yeah. tribute, you know. Yeah, and, and it's cool. The first song they just released. Uh, it's on Mascot. Okay, uh, I think it comes out in March. Oh uh, wow! The first song they released. Uh, a couple of days ago and it's blood of the sun and it's zach wild me and bobby so oh, wow. and, you know it, it came out great it's you know you hear the yeah you know you hear the influence singing and playing you know i mean it, leslie had that on yeah pretty and, much pretty much anybody in rock is going to have that you know and, and here's, here's a question um because i didn't know that you played with leslie but um n n now knowing yeah. that i got to ask you this um because I think one thing that's really ins inspiring about Leslie's story is anybody knows, sadly, you know, he, he lost his leg and that to diabetes, but he was yeah. still getting up on stage, from what I understand, in a wheelchair playing oh, yeah. the guitar. I mean, man, that is that is dedication uh, yeah. to your craft. Well, yeah, we were, you know, we were, I was there whenever he, when he lost his, like, we, yeah. it was actually going to be the last mountain show. Oh, wow. And uh, it was in Biloxi, and it, the weird thing was that it was actually a makeup show, because we canceled the last time because he had a problem with the same leg. Yeah, yeah. You know, and uh, so we get there and everything's fine. We go to set up and he's going, oh, I got to go to the hospital. They're going to put a, a stint in. It, it, I'll be fine, you know, just yeah, set yeah. up and I'll be there at the show. And we're yeah. just like, what? 
Yeah. So we set up and you know did a sound check everything, and then we get the call. All right, we're we're gonna cancel. They gotta, they gotta yeah. they gotta do something else. Blah blah. So yeah. we're like, well, should we come down there? You know, should we be worried? He's like, no, no, it's gonna be, you know, in and out. So you know, we all go to sleep. Hey, or we actually hung out, watched another band. You know, went to sleep. We're leaving the next morning, and I seen his wife Jenny, and and she's telling us they're going to cut his leg off, you know, oh, wow. and I'm like, what? What? Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, it was literally like that. And, uh, so we, you know, we get on airplanes, so all the way home, you know, I'm trying to find out, you know, yeah. is he okay? Is he okay? And, you know, finally get a hold of him. Uh, actually the first time I heard that he was okay was how he was on the Howard Stern show. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. uh, from the hospital. And that was the first, you know, Again. And he was already, he was already joking about it. Again, what dedication, what a trooper, I tell you. I mean, yeah. um, I, I, don't, I think most people would be like, oh, man. What yeah, a life and we did, you know, we yeah. did, uh, um, you know, we sh- the first shows we did with him in the chair was uh, Uli Roth was doing a tour. So wow. for like eight shows, I think it was, we, uh, we came out right in the middle of Uli's set. He'd call Leslie up and me and Leslie and Bobby on some of the shows, uh, you know, yeah. came up and then uh, a couple of shows it was just us two I think Uli's drummer played and then one show was uh, still hard drummer Mike oh, kind wow. of played with us you know but I mean, we would do you know two or three songs and then Uli would get back up and you know we would do House Rising Sun Going oh, okay. Down you yeah. know and uh, it was cool with both of them jamming you know yeah, and, and um, I'd imagine you know you and the other guys in the band you know seen Leslie get up after what he'd been through and Especially that first show that he's coming back and doing his thing in the chair. Yeah. How on yeah, that it's, must have been. And it's a hard, you know, that's a hard thing, you know. He, yeah. uh, the biggest problem with, you know, the chair with him is that, you know, he'd have to we'd get to these venues and, yeah. the, you know, the ramp would be so steep. So, one, it's hard. He's going to have to have help getting up. And, yeah, and, yeah. And then he comes over there, you know, there's no curtain. So he's coming over there, you know, and if the if the monitors aren't working, yeah. you know, it's, it's almost that... Uh, that manhood thing, you know, it's kind of like, you know, if, if you, he needs help, if he needs help using the restroom, yeah, none of us are going to think twice about it. Oh yeah, you know, oh, yeah. family member. Well, well, yeah, the other but thing, it's yeah, that, that middle thing of, uh, you know, you, having to have somebody there, I could just after seeing, you know, being around him, I see how that is, which, you know, affect yeah. him mentally. But he'd still go out there. See, that's the thing, yeah. and, and uh, not yeah. everybody would, you know. And you, so you got to yeah. give the guy credit, and you think, geez. If he's been through losing a leg and he can still get up on the stage and, and do his oh, thing, yeah. you know, uh, the rest of us not even better, you know, complain about anything or check it in, you oh, know. No, that's what I always said that because, yeah. you know, hell, that <laughs> yeah. he had, you know, he had he had cancer. He oh, wow. beat it. He was a, a heroin methadone addict. He beat all that. You know, it's wow. like, all right, well, no more complaining. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If he can get up in the stage yeah. in a wheelchair and play his guitar. Yeah. But, but, that's better you know, do our thing. He was, yeah. he was, I mean, aside from being an uh, incredible player and singer, yeah. he was an awesome person. Yeah. You know, I mean, that, that just that speaks volumes about a per, you know, him as a person, you know, getting up there and uh, doing it to the very end. I, I love that. And, um, oh, yeah. And now another another song on here that I really love is um, Good Woman That I Stood. It, it was um, yeah. kind of, uh, track number four, very different. Like the first. Yeah. It's actually on the on the album. It, it's yeah, the very last song. Oh, okay. So, but what, yeah, so what they're, they're kind of out of order on there. But, uh, yeah. But yeah. So that song, uh, I originally wrote it. It was I had you know it had different words. I wrote it and I, when I was in Black Symphony, we were doing uh, reforming the band, calling it something else, you know, uh-huh. a different singer, and we started working on an album. So. I threw that into the mix to you know to be something different. Yeah, yeah. And uh, the the singer Wade Williams, he wrote the words in you know maybe five five minutes or so. You know. Yeah, and it, we yeah. and we recorded it, and it was just you know guitar, vocals, and I, I threw a mandolin on. Yeah, and it, so it. Uh, and then that that band ended up not being that band, so. It, Okay. All the songs we wrote ended up being another Black Symphony album. Oh, and wow. It came out, but I don't, you know, it was yeah. like, it was after I left the band. It kind of came out. I don't know if they even sold anything yeah. of it, you know. But the version that ended up on the record, I didn't really care for. You know? Oh, okay. It so this is your... It wasn't true. It wasn't true to the... Uh, your vision. The, yeah. Yeah, the Beatle-y, 
you know, guitar mandolin mm-hmm. thing, you know. Uh, it was, but it had strings, and, yeah. you know, the guy that sang it on the that recording, you know, it was very, uh, a, a really great singer, like, you know, kind of a Stevie Wonder kind of I, I see, know, yeah. guy, and it didn't work. So this is your ver- version of like what, how you envisioned it originally, yeah. Yeah, and I mean it, it's pretty much exactly, pretty much exactly is how I that day when he wrote those words yeah. and we we recorded. It's pretty much that, you know. I mean, musically, it yeah. is. And, and the only, then, thing yeah. that, only thing different was that I sang it, and I still kind of sing it a lot, like Wade, the guy that wrote the lyrics, sang it, you know. Uh. Uh, and we added that. And this was a definitely a Jeff Martin thing, the drummer. He oh Jeff Martin, idea. one of my favorite. I mean, yeah. he, he, um, you know, he, he he's very much like you, multi talented. I mean, yeah. oh, super yeah. drummer. Goes back to Amazing you know singer, Ra- Racer X, uh, lead singer. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, Badlands. I, I love everything he, he did. He's a, and he's a great writer, you know. And, yeah. But he always comes up with those ideas. I mean, just like on yeah. the video, the Lollygag video, when during the drum fill, he filled it. All the drums come down the stairs, and then he comes rolling down the stairs in a robe, you know. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's that typical Jeff, you know. And what's interesting what about a guy like Jeff Martin, um, great great frontman, great lead singer, writer, drummer, and so he, yeah. he's one of these musicians that um, he actually knows what it's like to be in the front, you know, as a front man, and yeah. he knows what it's like to be in backstage as a drummer, so he's oh, he's, yeah. he's lived both the um, extremes there. And yeah, another... So he, yeah. yeah, he came in, you know, it's funny, when we... When, it came to that song. Uh, I wasn't really going to have any drums. I was just yeah. going to have some kind of, you know, some kind of percussion. And uh, he came in with that whole idea, that little snare and the big marching drum. And it sounds like a, you know, it sounds like a marching band playing yeah, in the yeah. background of a folky Beatles song. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. And um, now let's talk about some of the other guests you have on here. Um, yeah. One of the guitar players, Scott McCollin. I was telling you. Um, I interviewed Scott yesterday. He's from um, Tony Martin's solo band, and uh, yeah. he's got a band called Breed of Aggression. That's what I was talking to Scott about. But talk uh, about working with him. Yeah, he actually uh, he had wrote me because uh, he's a Dean artist. I'm, you know, not yeah. a Dean artist. So he had wrote me and you know just kind of reached out to me and he said, "Hey, I'm doing a you know doing a, like a multi artist you know solo thing, and you know would you want to play on a song?" So I ended up singing and playing on a song, and I, I think that. He's going to do that album like it's going to come out next year sometime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's what he told me. Yeah. But uh, that's how I met him. So in, in return, you know, uh, when I started uh, gathering, you know, people to play on this, you know, I said, "Hey, I'll send you, I'll send you some tracks, you know, throw yeah. down something, you know." That's cool. See if, you know, see and then, if we like yeah. it, you know. And then it worked out. We actually he has another band, Vontae, that uh, I was actually going to be part of. I wrote three mm. songs and. You know, recorded them with them, but I just I have too much going on that I really couldn't do uh, that. Yeah. I, I had to step out just because I I would have they'd have been waiting on me. You know, I hear you. I hear you. Another, you know, but another he's, a, yeah. he's a great guy, great player. You know, it's uh, you know, we but it worked out. You know, yeah. Another huge talent on here, a uh, guy I know. I'm Rowan Robertson. Um, many people Rowan. know from Dio. How did you hook up with him? Yeah, uh, me and Rowan and Andrew Friedman, who sings for. Uh, mm-hmm. Last in line. Yeah, and I, I hear um, I hear Rowan Robertson. Um, he may be um, working with King Cobra and Carmine Apice. So we have to oh, yeah. keep keep our eye out on that. And Jack yeah. Frost, another great guitar player you have on here. Yeah, and Jack, if if, if I end up, I'm trying right, trying now to uh, just you know line up some dates for next year. Yeah, and if I do, it's it, chances are it's going to be me, Jack Frost, and uh, Jeff Martin will be the band. Oh, cool! And um, so, and how about the drummer? Um, Jeff's going to be the drummer, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when Russ Parrish, um, another one of my favorite guitar yeah. players. Yeah. Oh yeah, you got to have Russ. He's, I mean, he's great. It, I mean, I, I've known him forever through Jeff. You know, back, yeah, yeah. back when he was in Fight. Yeah, uh, yeah. You know, back when he was in Booty Quake before Steel Panther. Steel you know? Panther. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's. You know, and he's and he's great. I mean, I threw, I sent him that song, and he sent that lead back, and I was like. It was exactly, I knew exactly what it was going to sound like before I even, you know. Yeah, yeah, and then. Listen, listen yeah. to it. And then you have Bill yeah, Avert, Verdi from, um, yeah. from Firehouse, yeah. Yeah, and Bill's great. He was, I think he was the first person I asked, probably. Yeah. Because uh, he's always been one of my favorites of that, of that era of, you know, of the rock guys. Yeah, yeah. You know, and he's a, I mean, great friend anyway, but, it, you know, the playing wise, he's just so. 
so melodic in a different way, you know. Yeah, um, are, are you a big fan of Firehouse? The reason I ask is, you know, they, they get kind of um, tagged with, you know, because they got that one hit ballad, um, Love of a Lifetime. But if you really yeah. dig into some of their music, they got great stuff. Yeah, and, you know, it's, I, I've known them for so long. We, I, we toured with them. It's still hard. And yeah. I've seen them so many times. They're all great. Musicians, you know? yeah. I mean, they're, they're, I mean, the vocals are great. You know, Bill's great. Mike Foster is hits harder than any drummer <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. you know i mean he's such a great drummer but then on top of it they're all great singers you know oh yeah and and nice guys every one of them you know and you know another so, one of your uh songs i really dig on the new album is um silly Hill hillbilly to me it kind of has a johnny yeah. cash influence to it yeah that's one of those songs that i think i wrote it in like 94 wow <laughs> and it was just like a I, I was putting together a band that never even happened you know yeah. uh but, and it was it's completely meant to be, you know, exactly what it is. Just, you know, like a bluegrass type, type song, you know. And the, I recorded all of it, and it was just strictly bluegrass. I mean, I didn't have that heavy guitar in there yet. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and bluegrass. I thought, well, yeah, I can hear that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I thought, well, maybe I'll just add that, gung, 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 you know, in the background. And once I put it in there, I was like, oh. It's perfect, you know. Oh, yeah, that, that's cool. And let yeah. me ask you, Scott, now, um, like I said, you know, you play the guitars, you play some of the bass, I understand. Yeah, um, yeah I, so, yeah, I played, on, so on the album I played, uh, obviously bass, but yeah. I played, uh, I played all the rhythm guitars, oh, and wow. uh, so all the all the guest guys, they just play the solos. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then I played, there's mandolin on it, uh, uh, piano, you know. Yeah, uh, a little bit of everything, but, yeah. Yeah. And here's, here's my final question: Is um, now you obviously are a great lead singer, great guitar player, and songwriter in your own right. So my question is: You're kind of a triple threat there. Um, do, do you consider yourself like? Um, did you start out as a guitar player? Were well, you always no, a I've, singer? I've been a, a bass player basically since I started. Oh know? wow! Uh, and I learned how to play. I mean, I knew how to play guitar. You know, when I even before I started. Yeah. You know, my family played so. I knew chords and stuff, but I didn't really play. So when I started, wow. I had that, you know, a little advantage that I kind of, you know, knew yeah. things. But you know, pretty much right away, I was a bass player. You know, and hell, I don't even think I, you know, I never even played guitar. Oh wow! You know, I like didn't uh, on a on a record or anything, you know, until I started doing my songs. You know, oh cool. The last yeah. couple of years and. You know, I mean, I play I play guitar better than most people. You know, yeah, yeah. But I still, I don't I don't enjoy the guitar like bass. You know, I mean, when I play yeah. bass, yeah. it's it's natural. I don't have to think about it. You know, everything just happens. You know, it's, that's interesting because everybody you know thinks of you for your guitar work. And so let me ask you, um, as far as you know, you primarily being a bassist, then like who are the bass yeah. players that really influenced you growing up? Uh, Tony Levin. Oh wow! Yeah, definitely, definitely. Uh, you know, Chris Squire. Yeah, yeah. You know, all the, yes. all those guys like that. You know, uh, Getty Lee. You know, any, anybody that had the cool bass. You know, Steve Harris. You know, all those yeah. kind of guys. Were you much of a uh, Geezer fan? The reason I ask is, you know, um, come to find out, Geezer not only was a great, amazing bass player, but he wrote all the a lot of the lyrics for those early oh, yeah. Sabbath albums. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, that, if you're with Ozzy, you have to be a bass player to write the lyrics. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Paul Daisley wrote all the rest of them. But, yeah, yeah. But yeah, uh, I, I like Geezer. You know, I think that uh, I like his. I like Geezer in Sabbath. You yeah, know? yeah. Uh, I think that's his best. Yeah, his best. Yeah, yeah, it's not his style is cool with Sabbath. You know, yeah. it, it's so perfect. I don't think anybody. You know, and I clearly, whenever I listen to the stuff with uh, like the Ronnie Dio. Yeah. Uh, years, I can clearly hear that Ronnie's playing bass on a bunch of that stuff. Yeah, in fact, and, I heard uh, I heard Geezer talk about. It. He said, you know, once Ronnie joined the band, he goes, he goes, yeah. you know, when when Ozzy was in the band, I had I was writing all the lyrics, and he says, but yeah. when you got a guy that writes like Ronnie, I kind of just yeah. stood back and let him do his thing. <laughs> yeah, and when I listen to those songs, yeah, I can hear that Ronnie's playing bass on the recordings on oh, several yeah. things because it, it just sounds. I mean, being a. Uh, a studier of bass players, I guess. Yeah. I can just hear that that's, this isn't geezer, that, you know. And that's, I mean, as I've grown older, I've realized that's, that's music anyway. Yeah, that, I mean, it, it's, <laughs> that, that happens a lot more than people think, you know. And, and oh, yeah. See, Ronnie thought of it as a lead singer, but if you know anything about his background or if you've even read the book, yeah. um, he started out as a bass player before he was ever yeah. a singer. And, and yeah. I don't think Jimmy Bain played, I guarantee you Ronnie probably played on his solo stuff. 
Yeah. Because it sounds it sounds so consistently the the same kind of bass style yeah. all through his career. Yeah. No it, matter who was no matter who was playing bass. And, yeah. You know, but yeah. it's that's very common. You know, I mean. Yeah. In fact, um, I heard a lot of times Ronnie would write us when he'd write his songs. He'd he'd write the riffs and their songs like on the bass first. And then, then you get into the lyrics, but uh, yeah. And and as far as your singing, I was curious. Um, were you always a singer early on, or is it kind of one of those situations where I'd rather sing my own songs than have another guy come in and do it? No, I've always been. I've always been the you know the the backup singer. They could. Yeah. You know, I I sound like a singer, so I could always sing the yeah. the lead parts with the singer. You know, make it bigger or yeah. as in, like in Stillheart. You know. Yeah. Uh, towards the end, especially. You know, uh, I would sing all the lead parts on the choruses, yeah. and then uh, the guitar player would sing, you know, the harmony, yeah. and that would give Millie, the singer, and give him the yeah. option of putting the mic out to the crowd to sing, you know. So what was that yeah. transition like when you started singing, Lee? Because um, I'd imagine like a lot of people at first, it's kind of like, maybe you don't like the way your voice sounds, or you think, oh, that sounds kind of weird. Um, being, being the front man, but um, did you have a lot of people tell you, hey, Red, you, you're a pretty good singer, just do it? Yeah, I mean, I, I, you know, I sing, I sing in cover bands, you yeah. know, for forever, you know, whenever I'd be home yeah. playing covers, you know, and I'd sing whatever. And I, it is harder whenever I, I did my first solo album and I had to sing everything myself. It was, mm-hmm. it was a little harder to step back and just listen to it as an outsider you know of course because you're yeah. you know my bass parts i don't even have to listen i know you know i know it's going to be fine i know this is going to be fine but then when it comes to the singing part okay well that's not my uh it's not your forte not my, yeah yeah it, 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 it kind of is but it's you know it's more of that uh middle thing like all right i had to have okay let somebody else listen to it and what actually made me not think about it no more was whenever Jeff, I was going to have him sing oh, wow. a couple of parts on my uh, the last album, and he t- Jeff said, "Man, I, no, I like your voice better on it. Man, it sounds great." Yeah, because because as, as a fan, I, I got to tell you, um, listening to that, that's one thing that really stood out. Not not just the guitar and the bass, but um, your vocals. I thought, man, this guy's got he's a pretty decent singer. He can. I think it's cool yeah. that he's singing his own stuff, and um, that, that's why yeah. I was asking all that because. Um, I don't know well, if you, you know, know it, but you're a great one, singer. Yeah. Yeah. One great thing about having Jeff as the drummer too is that uh, me and Jeff have been in several bands together. You know, and uh-huh. one thing that we have is that we sound very much alike when it's, we sing together. So if we're doing your voice is gel together. Doing, yeah. yeah. If we're doing a song that he's singing lead and I'm singing backups, you can't tell who's singing which part. If it's one, if I if I'm singing lead and he's singing backups, you can't tell. You know. Yeah. I mean. So we had we had another band blasted static. Oh, oh! I was going to just say that because yeah. you know, when I interviewed him a few years ago, okay, so you were in that band yeah. because yeah. Um, I interviewed him about that, and, and and I was digging that. Is that band still together? Or? Uh, we did the one album. We did you know a couple of shows. You know because two of the guys are in Australia. You That's know? what I understand. Yeah. He was telling me like some of the guys like. I think you guys did a show at the Whiskey or something. He says the band's yeah. not all, the band did not all meet until that night. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. We yeah we we met and rehearsed. Yeah. Yeah. One time, one time, and did the show, and then we went back to uh, Lake Tahoe and did another show, and you know hung out. And great guys. Uh, I just seen, uh, I just seen, you know, a couple of them when I was in Australia last year, and uh, you know they're super great guys. Uh, we there was talks about doing another, you know, writing another album, but. Yeah. I'm not sure. Because you know what's funny is um, when I posted the interview I did with him on my site, I mean, it, um, it was a relatively new band. You guys were just releasing the debut album. Nobody really heard of you, but I got all these hits for video. I'm sure I'm sure just because it was the guy from Racer X, who knows, but um, yeah. just just amazing. And then I, I do an yeah. interview like with Carmine Apiece and it gets 16 hits. You just never know. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. I, I love Carmine. We, uh, we actually toured together with uh, Michael Shaker Group. Oh, cool. Yeah. He, did, he, he did one most of the time uh, in, that I played with uh, MSG it was uh, Pete Holmes was the drummer most of the time but oh, wow. we did we did one tour that was that Carmine was there and uh, I don't even remember what year that was. Yeah. It was it was pretty cool you know I Carmine's a, he's a cool guy. Carmine, yeah, he's he's super cool. I mean, I mean, he was telling me. I mean, we were joking because I mean, you hear guys talking about how John influenced uh, John Bonham in Sun City. He that's the guy that influenced John Bonham. Um, you know, and then, and then, I'll tell you that. 
<laughs> yeah, and then and then um, and he's like, yeah, that's right. And then um, I was talking to Mark Stein about his new solo album coming out next week, and, and he was telling me, you know, Vanilla Fudge actually he's like, we influenced the guys in Deep Purple, if you can believe that. We we influenced the guys in Sticks. So I'm like, wow, that's oh, how yeah, far back I, those guys go. You know, and it's, it's funny because uh, whenever whenever we were on tour, me and uh, if we were jamming at Soundcheck yeah. or something, we would uh, usually. He would have me play. Uh, uh, Do you think I'm sexy with him? You know, oh, uh, yeah. Rod, <laughs> yeah, Rod yeah, Stewart. Stewart. Holy, that's the only his, reason is that's the only reason song. is because nobody really plays that bass line right. You yeah. know, the do did do do You know, it's very. You, you got to be that kind of player, and so we would do that. But we would do you know some other, uh, some other uh, stuff, vanilla yeah. fudge stuff. You know, and Tim Boger, he was one of my favorite bass players growing up too. You know. Oh so, yeah, yeah. And I can't, I can't really say that I was a big Vanilla Fudge, Vanilla Fudge fan as an overall, yeah, you know, band, but, band, but, but you know, I love Tim's playing, you know, and there were certain riffs, of course, that you're like, oh, you know, yeah, Vanilla, uh, Vanilla Fudge is one of those bands that um, you either love them or hate them, but they, they were like at the pinnacle when when all these big rock bands, they were like one of the first. In fact, when yeah. you know, people talk about that Sullivan show, they usually either reference Vanilla Fudge because they were on there or the Beatles. So that's good company. Yeah, and, you know? and that's the thing is you did you know, uh, <laughs> Vanilla Fudge is one of those bands, kind of like Utopia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where they were they were so good, but they just didn't have the songs. You know, I mean, a band like Deep Purple, who is amazing. Yeah. And not only were they amazing, but the songs were great, and that's why, you know, that's why they stood out over everybody a else. band like yeah. yeah, a band like Iron Butterfly or somebody like that. You know. It's, they didn't have the songs like Deep Purple, you know. I mean, oh yeah, that's hard, so... hardly anybody does. It's, you know, that's one of my favorite bands of all times as well. You know, yeah, and, yeah, and that's yeah. pretty much every era. Yeah, I know, could I talk mean, to I could talk to you for hours about Deep, Deep Purple. In fact, maybe I'll invite you back one day and we can do. Because yeah. I have another interview show where we talk to guys about you know their favorite albums by their favorite band, and I'd love to talk yeah. to you about Deep Purple. But like one of my favorite Deep Purple albums, people used to tell you they love Burn or. Machine Head. I lean a little more towards Burn only because, you know, I didn't realize at the time David Coverdale. Um, yeah, he's a yeah. singer from White Snake. That was oh, what yeah. he did first. You know, that's what he was known for. Oh first. yeah, and then, you know, you have Glenn Hughes. Glenn Hughes, so, the two of those yeah, guys you together. Have, you have Glenn Hughes singing backups. Oh, him, yeah, him and Glenn together. Gotta, yeah, that's got to be the hardest thing, you know, because I mean, hell, you know, trapeze. I know that uh, uh, I talked to Glenn before. And I, I don't remember if he told me or if yeah. I read it in the thing, but they were talking about. The Trapeze album, uh, we're, uh, you're the, we're the music, you're, uh, you're the music, we're the band. Okay, wow, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, they, uh, the album didn't break, you know, so he got the call, hey, you want to come and, you know, play bass in Deep Purple and, sure. you know, yeah, why not? the high parts and, yeah, you know, yeah. okay, and he joined. Then all of a sudden the Trapeze album took off on the radio and he was out on tour with Deep Purple, you know, Yeah. and that, and which is funny because that, that's what, uh, that's what he know, became known two, for. Yeah. Yeah, and the other two guys in Trapeze was Mel Galley, which he's, you know, he wrote all the songs from the White Snake. Slide it in, yeah. White Snake, and uh, Dave Allen was a drummer for Judas Priest, you know. Uh-huh, yeah. And that was Trapeze. You yeah, know, but yeah. that's, that, that's my favorite. Uh, Burn is my favorite Deep Purple album, I, I would say. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, um, yeah. I love Machine Head, but I, I lean towards Burn, too. And um, So maybe one day we can talk about that, Rev. But um, if you're, oh, yeah, if you're yeah, a Glenn please. Hughes fan... Um, Check out the new Dead Daisies album he did. I mean, every track on there is just, kill, he's killing it. Oh, yeah. Glenn, Glenn if, he, if yeah. Glenn has a bad day, yeah, yeah. It's, still, it's still the most incredible thing you've ever heard. <laughs> oh, I see, yeah. I've seen him in every situation, you know, sing yeah. and with no monitors, and it, he never hits a bad note. I mean, yeah. and he's such, and he's the sweetest guy in the world. You know, I, I remember having a, at the NAMM show one year, mm -hmm. and I, had, I broke my hand. Yeah. And I had cast on, and he came up, and he's like, "Oh, Rev, are you going to be able to play? Are you, you know, it's like he was concerned about yeah, yeah, yeah. Rev, about Rev Jones, and I was like, "Oh, this is awesome. That's awesome. It's Glenn Hughes. <laughs> yeah, he's worried about me. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, he's a sweet, sweet guy, amazing singer. If you ever have a chance yeah. to uh, interview him or talk to him, uh, I love that man. I can't just, tell you. Yeah. Just ask him, ask him to sing Stevie Wonder for you. 
Oh wow! He'll he'll start singing. I was born in Little Rock. Yeah, I can, that, I, I, that voice, and you just go, yeah. "Oh my God!" <laughs> yeah, in fact, you know, you're talking about Carmine, and and you know, and that song, "Do You Think I'm Sexy" from Rod Stewart. Yeah. But a lot of people don't realize is he's actually credited as a co-writer on that song. That's why oh, yeah. he uh, that that song means so much to him, you know, because um, oh yeah, it was such a big hit, and and he he played such a huge um, uh, role in that. Well, yeah, um, Carmine Carmine's a great singer too. I don't know if you ever. Have ever really heard? I mean, he's got that cool voice anyway. You know, yeah, yeah. He has that natural rasp, even if he's just kind of singing. You know, when he's doing his drum solo, just hey, 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 you know, getting people to sing. Yeah, in fact, you know, he's getting he's getting ready to re-release his album uh, Guitar Zeus, and he was he was joking with me that you know, here I'm I'm a legendary drummer, and he goes. Um, only way, only way I could um, get a solo deal was um, getting all these guitar players together and doing a guitar-oriented album, yeah. <laughs> which is kind of funny. That, that just shows you the huge talent that the guy is, you know. Yeah, exactly. Well, Rev, um, I really enjoyed yep. doing this with you. So let's um, let's keep in touch. And um, yep. when the interview posts, probably about two weeks, I'll I'll let your publicist know. And uh, if you'd like to post okay. on any of your sites, feel free to do so. Yeah, definitely, definitely will. Thanks for having me. Okay. Yeah, and, anytime. Uh, yeah, and I will come back and we'll do. Uh, Deep we'll purple. Talk about deep purple. Burn, burn. That'll be fun. So, um, cool. I, I, I will, I will do that. Take care, buddy. Yeah, thank you, man. Okay, bye, bye.